Hello everybody. This video is an introduction to matrix algebra. Our ultimate goal is going to be to solve linear equations, such as these two equations right here. 2x plus 3y equals 4 and 7x plus 6y equals 5. Written in this format, it's called a system of equations. Now, equations like this can be written in multiple ways. The primary goal of this first video is to learn how to convert between different forms of sets of linear equations. Converting a system of equations to vector equations, which we have seen before. Something new called a matrix equation. And then an even more compact form called an augmented matrix. This is what we're going to learn. Now, often we'll write vectors in column form. So, for example, the vector AB, which we would often write with angle brackets, we would write with its entries in a column. And we'd use square brackets around it like so. Or, if we had a three component vector ABC, again, we could write that as a column of numbers, A, B, and C, again using square bracket notation. And so these are both vectors, just in a different format. Now, vector equations, we've seen them before. For example, the parametric equation of a line. So given a equation, L of t, the points on that line, which have coordinates x, y, we'd write that as the vector m times t plus the base point p. Now to convert that into this new notation, we, could, we can also write points as columns. So x, y becomes this. The slope vector has components m1, m2 times t plus the base point p1, p2. And you can, of course, use your vector operations on vectors even when they're in column form. So, for example, you could do scalar multiplication of this vector, slope vector, times t. So we get m1 times t and m2 times t. Our other major vector operation was vector addition. We can add these two vectors together, and even if they're in column form, just add straight across. So the first component is m1 times t plus p1. The second component is m2 times t plus p2. So we have the vector on the left is equal to the vector on the right. And since there's just one vector on either side, the only way these can be equal is if the first component equals the first and the second equals the second. And if we actually break that into two equations, we get these same two equations that we used frequently when we did calculations with lines. So there we have it. Uh, that's how you can convert this vector equation to just a system of equations. And so for a more numeric example, if you like numbers a little bit better, let's say you have this equation of a line in two-dimensional space. Right? To write it as our column style vector equation, we'd write this as xy is equal to the vector 2, 5 times t plus the vector 7, 4. And that's a vector equation. That's equivalent to the system of equations x equals 2t plus 7 and y equals 5t plus 4. And so kind of looking at the patterns, seeing how we can go back and forth between these. Right? That's the idea. You don't have to write out all the different steps with scalar multiplication and vector addition. Hopefully with practice you'll be able to look at this and understand how to write down the system of equations. When we talked about equations of planes, right, we often use the ax plus by plus cz equals d form. But when we first started talking about planes, we did make note that you could write the equation of a plane in this format. You could write it in parametric vector form with the parameters t and s. It's kind of like two slope vectors, uh, vector v and vector w. And if this is a plane in three-dimensional space, right, these points have an x, y, and a z component. The vector v could be written in column form as v1, v2, v3 times t 
plus the vector w, so w1, w2, w3 times the parameter s, plus that base point. And again, using vector addition and scalar multiplication, you can combine all these terms and separate this out into three equations. So again, we have a vector equation converted into a system of equations. Now, in general, when we work with equations like this, we'll want to write the variables on one side of the equation and keep all the constants on the other side. And even though in these previous examples, right, when we had the equation of a line and the variable was the parameter t, the equation of a plane, the variables were the parameters t and s, usually uh, the variables in these equations the variables will be x, y, and z, or sometimes you could write them as x1, x2, x3. Right? For example, if we have the equations of two planes, right, uh, we could write that system of equations as a vector equation. Though there are a couple of little tricky things here. For instance, it looks like just y here, but there is a coefficient of y. The coefficient of y is like 1. I have no idea why that's an 8 here. It must have been from an earlier version. That 8 should be a 1. Sorry about that. Also, it looks like there's no z term, but we do need to leave a space for z. right? So in this case, it's as if we have zero z's in this equation. right? So if you want, you can gather this into two vectors, put the left-hand sides in the vector, put the right-hand sides, those constants, in a vector. Again. That a should be a 1. I'm sorry about that. And then separate out these terms according to the different variables. So you could write this big vector as the sum of three vectors, one with the x components, one with the y components, that is the correct y, and one with the z components. Even if they're 0, you do need to put something in here. And then from each of these components, you could factor out the variable. So taking out the x leaves you with vector 2, 5. Taking out the y leaves you with a vector 4 and 1. Taking out the z leaves you with a vector 7, 0. Right, so that's how you could convert from a system of equations to a vector equation. Now, let's learn about matrix equations. The idea with a matrix equation is that you're gathering different parts of the equation into kind of different locations. So for example, we're going to gather the coefficients of the variables into a rectangular grid of numbers, which is called a matrix. A matrix is just a grid of numbers. We'll gather all the variables into a vector, and we'll gather all the constants into a vector. So for example, here's a system of equations. We always want to start by lining up the variables. So line up your x's, line up your y's. If you want, you can convert this into a vector equation for practice. But these coefficients, 2, 3, 5, and 6, we'll gather that into a grid of numbers. We'll enclose it with square brackets, just like we do with vectors. And that's our first example of a matrix. Matrix 2, 3, 5, 6. Those are the coefficients. The variables are x and y, so we'll put those in a vector, x, y. And the constants, 4, 7, we'll put those in a vector, 4, 7. And so this is the matrix equation, which represents this system of equations. And so it's going to be important to be able to go back and forth between a system of equations, a vector equation, and a matrix equation. And also, if you look at each column of this matrix, right, each one of these columns is one of the vectors of coefficients of the variables. Right? So they're all related. Now, if you're converting from a system of equations to a matrix equation, you don't have to write the intermediate vector equation. You could just skip from, say, this general version and skip right to the matrix equation. I want to make sure that everyone's comfortable from going from any one of these forms to any other form. Now, not all matrices are perfect squares. It depends on how many equations you have and how many variables. 
Again, here's a trickier equation, which has a two equations and three unknowns. Here there's no x, so it's as if there are zero x's. So if you read off the coefficients here, we have 7, 4, and 2, 0, 1, and 3. So gather those into a grid. And this assumes you've lined up your variables. The variables here are x, y, and z, so we put those in a vector. And the constants are 1, negative 5, and we'll put those in a vector. All right, so one thing that you'll notice from this example is that not all vectors have to be the same size. Right? So, for instance, you have three variables here, but we only have two equations. Right? That's why we only have two constants, two entries in this vector on this side. One thing you can tell, though, from the matrix equation, the number of columns of this matrix corresponds to the number of variables. That will always be true. And also, the number of rows of your matrix corresponds to the number of equations and also the number of constants in this vector here. Now as a trickier, maybe I should say trickiest possible example would be if you came across a system of equations that was completely disorganized. Right? What if you had you know, variables on both sides and you know, multiple constants? And sometimes, oh, look, here's a variable z that doesn't appear in either one of these two equations. Right? To write the matrix equation, you have to make sure everything is organized. So looking at the system of equations, before we can write down the matrix equation, we want to identify how many variables there are. We're going to want to line those variables up and combine you know, any like variables and put the constants on the opposite side, like so. And then, once this is all lined up, then we can easily read off the coefficients and put them into this matrix. So here we've got three equations with three variables. It's going to give us a 3 by 3 matrix and three components in our variable vector and three components in our constant vector. So this would be the matrix equation corresponding to this system of equations. All right, and finally, the most efficient notation of all, something called an augmented matrix. And in this notation, it actually drops the variables all together and just focuses on the numbers. What we do to create an augmented matrix is we combine the coefficient matrix with a constant vector and just put it together in one big matrix. Right? Augmenting means making something bigger, so it's like we're enlarging the coefficient matrix by attaching the constant vector. And if you want, you don't have to, but I often like to separate the coefficients with the constants with a dashed line, like so. So for example, if you have this system of equations right here, and then you can turn it into a matrix equation. Right? If you take the coefficient part, right, and then add in one more column corresponding to the constant numbers, this would be called the augmented matrix of this system of equations. Or, here's a different looking example, but the same general idea. Uh, here we have the equations of two planes. Right. In this case, the coefficients are variables, but they are still coefficients of x, y, and z. So a, b, c, m, n, and p, those are our coefficients. d and q represent our constants. So this would be the augmented matrix for this system of equations. Now, ultimately, uh, our goal is going to be to solve these. And so we need to talk about something called row operations. And we'll be talking about these a lot in this video and in many videos that follow. Now, a row operation is a way to change an augmented matrix that corresponds to some kind of a valid, acceptable algebraic operation on the corresponding system of equations. So, for example, Let's say you have this augmented matrix with these variables on the left. As we know, that corresponds to this set of equations on the right. 
Now, one of the things you can do to an augmented matrix is you can take all the numbers in a row and multiply it by some constant, which I'm calling n right here. So this row C, D, Q, everything's been multiplied by n. And anything you do on a row corresponds to something you would do on the original system of equations. Right? The first row corresponds to this equation and doesn't change. But imagine that you had taken the second equation and multiplied both sides of that equation by the number n. So n times the left side, the quantity cx plus dy, and n times the right side, n times the constant q. Well, in that case, after you distribute this through, you'll get nc times x plus nd times y plus n times q. So the coefficient of x is nc, the coefficient of y is nd, and the new constant is nq. Right? And we know that we can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number. Right? That's a valid algebraic operation. It's not going to change the answer to whatever this system of equations is. It's not going to change the solution. Right? So this is something we might be able to do to help us simplify and solve a system of equations like this, but using this much shorter notation. Now, there's a few other row operations as well. For example, you can add one equation to another equation, and that corresponds, in an augmented matrix, it corresponds to adding the values in one row to another row. So for example, here's an augmented matrix, again, starting with the same matrix as before, corresponds to this set of equations. Right? You could take these elements in the first row and add them to the numbers in the second row. And that's okay. Right? What does that correspond to? Well, imagine you're leaving the first equation alone. Now, we know we can add equal numbers to both sides of an equation. Just like you can multiply both sides by the same thing, you can add the same thing to both sides of an equation. But in this case, since the left-hand side of the first equation is equal to the right-hand side of the first equation, you can add the left-hand side of the first equation to the left-hand side of the second equation. As long as you add the right-hand side of the first equation to the right-hand side of the second equation. All right, so it's like you're combining equations, you're adding them. Now, after you add these and you group like terms, you'll see that the coefficient of x is c plus a, which is this number right here. The coefficient of y is d plus b, this number here, and your new constant is q plus p, which is this number here. So again, you're doing something to the numbers in this augmented matrix, and it corresponds to some valid algebraic operation over here. But once we get really good at this, we're going to see that this gives us a way to solve equations quickly without having to write all these variables and equal signs. Also, we can subtract rows from each other. That corresponds to subtracting equations from each other. That's also okay algebraically. And finally, this will be very useful. Um, combining those two examples, you can multiply a row by a constant number, and you can add or subtract the values in one row from the values in another row. That corresponds, if you combine those two steps, you can add or subtract a multiple of one row or one equation from another. And so starting off with the same base example as before, imagine taking the second equation and subtracting a constant times this first equation. All right, so from the left-hand side of the second equation, we're going to subtract a constant times the left-hand side of the first equation. Now, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other. So the right-hand side of this equation, subtract that same constant times the right-hand side of the first equation. When you go ahead and simplify this through, you'll get to this. And you know, these examples are very lettery. We're going to do numeric example in just a moment. So 
don't worry if this seems a little bit abstract. Uh, and as one final example, I'll just mention this in passing. You can also switch the order of the rows. That just corresponds to writing equations in a different order. We probably won't do that too much, but it's possible. All right, let's see how this is actually useful now. Let's say we want to solve this system of equations. I just, I really want to give you a sneak preview of this topic, right? We'll, we'll talk about a full procedure on how to do this next time, but just to get you thinking about this. Let's say you want to solve this system of two equations with two unknowns. What we're going to learn to do in this part of the course is first we'll create the augmented matrix corresponding to this system of equations. Right? And what we'd like to do is solve for x or y. One thing we could do, right, we can actually cancel out variables with the following trick. Well, not trick, let's say technique. Let's take this second row, 4, 8, 24, and we could subtract 2 times the numbers in the first row from each of these numbers here. Right, so from 4, we can subtract 2 times the number above it. From 8, we can subtract 2 times the number above it. From 24, we can subtract 2 times the number above it. Right, so we'll have these values right here. The first row does not get changed at all, just the second row. The reason I'm subtracting 2 times the first row is I kind of want to get rid of this 4. Right? The more zeros and ones we see, the easier the equations are going to be. So 4 minus 2 times 2 gives us 0. 8 minus 2 times 3 is 8 minus 6, which is 2. And 24 minus 2 times 5 is 24 minus 10, which is 14. Another row operation we could do is multiplying this second row by a half. And that's going to turn this 2 into a 1. And so multiplying everything by a half, the second row becomes 0, 1, 7. Now, if at this point we convert it back into a system of equations, Right, the first equation is untouched, but the second equation becomes 0 times x plus 1 times y equals 7. Or in other words, y equals 7. And we're halfway to solving the system of equations. Right, there is a step-by-step -step procedure we can use, which explains kind of how to get these zeros and ones every time without fail. And so we will talk about that a lot next time. But again, the main goal of this video I'm just showing you this now to you know, convince you this is worthwhile. The main takeaway I'd like you to get from this is how to take a system of equations and to convert it into either a vector equation, a matrix equation, or an augmented matrix. Right? The goal of this video is primarily learning how to convert. So as an exercise that would be good for you to work on, Let's say you're given this system of equations, uh, 3x plus 3y plus 7z equals 14. It's a great equation. And then z minus y equals 42. I'd like you to try converting that into a vector equation, a matrix equation, and an augmented matrix. Do not worry about solving it yet. Don't worry about row operations. We'll talk about those a lot in the next video. But for now, I just want you to get used to converting. And be careful, this is a little bit tricky. You're going to need to sort these variables out and line them up correctly before you start writing down these equations. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.